Okay, everyone. Um, it's already three um, three o'clock here in uh, in Paris. So uh, welcome all to uh, to today's webinar. I'm uh, I'm very happy to uh, to be hosting uh, this Basic Front Labs expert talk. This is the fourth uh, webinar we have on uh, specific expertise subjects. Today I'll be discussing with um, two of my colleagues, uh, Nicolas Degout and, uh, and Vincent Thomas, seismic inversion and characterization, how to empower your data and unveil the value behind them. So just a brief introduction on uh, our panelists today. Uh, so Nicolas Degout uh, is working with us in Bessie Prend Lab since 2006. Uh, he's now the team leader for the Rock Properties Characterization Team and has been involved in uh, many, many integrated consulting studies around the world, um, as well as seismic inversion and characterization expert. Uh, he has been uh, deeply involved in the development of uh, Bessie Prend Lab's proprietary seismic inversion and characterization software, which is Interwell. So today we'll be discussing also a bit about uh, Interwell software. And uh, also, on the other side, I have with me uh, Vincent Thomas, uh, who has joined the Cifran Lab in 2014 as a geophysicist and also has been involved in many multidisciplinary studies related to acoustic and elastic seismic inversion. He worked a lot on uh, azimuth azimuth seismic inversion, uh, seismic inversion with uh, interbed multiple management, seismic characterization and unconventional but also unconventional reservoirs, faults and fracture uh, characterization. Vincent has also been involved in the development of many workflows for unconventional uh, field characterization and hot shade, as well as tight carbonate formations, but also developed uh, new uh, broadband seismic inversion workflows. Um, and introduce you to myself. Uh, I'm Nicolas Howey. I'm a senior petroleum uh, geoscientist here um, and a petroleum system analyst at uh, BC Prend Lab, and I will be your moderator for today. So um, today we will be discussing um, uh, before that, I'll, I'll just brief you a bit about the, the meeting guidelines. So all of you are muted. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, during the presentation, please use the question toggle, which is on top. You just click on it and, and write. We will be answering uh, to your question at the end of uh, each uh, session. Also, we'll be sending you some polls. So we'll have some of your feedback on, uh, on some questions that we and the experts have. And finally, this presentation is recorded on our YouTube channel, Basic Front Lab. So don't hesitate to, uh, uh, you know, promote it or, uh, or if you need to check it again, uh, you can uh, freely do so on, on the YouTube channel. Uh, so today's agenda, uh, we will firstly be discussing with uh, Nicolas and Vincent about uh, Bessie Prend Lab GNG organization and experience a bit quickly, just to show you the expertise we have internationally. And then we'll be looking at data-driven workflow, uh, looking at uh, how to uh, empower your data and how to go from the data to uh, to more insights. Um, and then we'll illustrate some workflows and case studies for you guys related to uh, the seismic inversion. And then at the end of the day, open the discussion around the interwell software and uh, how and when can you use it. So uh, I'm happy to, uh, to give the floor to you, Nicola, and uh, have a nice uh, webinar session all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, uh, Nicola, for the, for the introduction. So um, we, uh, we are going today to uh, introduce you first to the, the basic front lab uh, organization uh, in particular for the for the GNG uh, department uh, namely geology and, uh, and geophysics so we are organized in uh, three uh, teams uh, structural stratigraphic interpretation team the reservoir characterization team and the basin evaluation and modeling team uh, in order to allow for an uh, efficient integration between uh, all the different disciplines during all our projects uh, execution uh, in particular, today we are going to um, uh, go into detail uh, and to highlight part of the activities of the reservoir characterization teams, which uh, is uh, more, uh, in particular today, uh, highlighting the seismic characterization activities. So for these activities, um, we are organized uh, closely around our uh, proprietary software solution, which is Interwell, as Nicolas mentioned. Uh, which we use uh, both uh, on our consulting uh, activities um, with uh, at our disposal the, the, the latest uh, announcement techniques, uh, algorithms uh, in order to, uh, to provide the, the best answer possible to uh, all our clients' uh, uh, problems and, uh, and benefit also for, from the latest advances of our R&D. 
And in parallel, uh, in the same team, we are also in charge of the software development for, uh, for the Interwell software. So, which means that we have um, an organization which is very much closely uh, intertwined between uh, consulting and software. And uh, it allows us to um, have, uh, in fact, uh, a, a very um, tailor-made uh, software that uh, allows for uh, our consulting activities to be uh, as, uh, as efficient as possible and uh, also to drive uh, the development of our software solution in, in order to uh, take into account um, the, 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 the functionalities we, we need when, uh, when performing studies. So I will just quickly uh, introduce you to basic front lab experience. As you can see in this slide, we uh, are experience in a lot of countries all around the world. Basically, this means that uh, whatever your context, whatever your particular case, we are likely to have uh, in, our, uh, in our teams uh, an expert or a specialist that uh, will provide you with his experience and uh, added value uh, in order to uh, really closely understand uh, the, the particular situation that uh, you may have. In terms of topics, we cover a broad range of topics from exploration to production. And uh, in particular, regarding the seismic characterization activities, we uh, uh, take part in many different kinds of projects, whether it concerns seismic data announcements or uh, a better understanding of, uh, of fault networks through seismic characterization, better understanding of your reservoirs through presence and sickness of lithology, uh, characterization, quantitative interpretation of properties, all this in order to uh, be able to uh, allow you to better understand the risks associated to, uh, to uh, the field um, you are working with, to even uh, tackle some uh, more specialized uh, fields such as uh, pore pressure predictions, uncertainty analysis, that we uh, now perform through uh, stochastic inversion uh, studies and um, in, uh, in reservoir uh, cases uh, to go down to the generation of seismic constraints uh, tailor-made for, uh, for your geological model in order to have uh, the, the best image possible of, uh, of your field and your reservoir. So we are going to introduce you now how we organize our workflow. So as you may have seen on this uh, transition slide, uh, the aim will be to start from the data you have, whatever its quality, and then try to maximize its potential and uh, translate it into an information that we will be able to interpret in terms of, uh, of uh, properties that will be relevant to uh, your particular uh, case study. So all, stu all, uh, all studies we perform, all projects we design, uh, always start the same way is uh, basically uh, looking with you at your objectives and the data you have at your disposal to make a, uh, a sound inventory of uh, what you uh, what you need and what you what you have at your disposal to uh, to help us solve your issue then we uh, work on the data itself through a proper analysis and uh, the techniques we have in order to uh, be able to uh, empower as much as possible the data. That means to be sure that we capture all the information that is uh, behind it, uh, even if it's hidden between behind, uh, behind noise or uh, acquisition patterns, footprints. We have a lot of uh, tools at our, our disposal. We will uh, highlight them a little bit uh, more further on in this presentation. Then we uh, design our tailor-made workflows that uh, will uh, exploit this data in order to uh, translate and capture all the information available in this data, interpret it in terms of, uh, of reservoir property, reservoir characteristics, um, according to the particular problem you may, uh, you may face in, uh, in your field, uh, in order to provide you the most uh, relevant answers uh, in order to allow you uh, taking your decisions with uh, all the information possible uh, at your disposal. So 
basically uh, when we design projects with uh, with you with our clients uh, we first start with a lot of exchange to allow you uh, sharing with us uh, your uh, your objective what you already know what you want to improve on your understanding of uh, of your field um, whether it's uh, announcing the seismic data you have at your disposal uh, taking into account updating your your models with newly acquired data uh, and ultimately uh, provide you answers with uh, identification of uh, prospective zones uh, whatever the environment you may uh, you may have uh, in, in, uh, in your field of study whether it's tight uh, unconventional or simply you, you want uh, a better understanding of your fault network through a seismic characterization so first step mandatory before uh, before designing the workflows is to go deeply through the data you have uh, with uh, an inventory identification of your data sets uh, what type of data what workflow will be the best the most suitable in order to uh, take full advantage of, uh, of what you have at your disposal uh, and uh, whether it's seismic data so a lot of different kind of seismic data we are able to uh, manage them, uh, integrate them in our workflows, and also well data, so standard sonic density and also quantitative log interpretations that we may also uh, perform if you uh, if they are not available on your side. And then, um, once this data is identified, we have at our disposal uh, a lot of workflows and tools in order to uh, put uh, them. In, uh, in, the best, in the best state possible uh, to, to base the, the workflows we are going to, uh, to apply on them. So we have at our disposal techniques for uh, reconstruction modeling of missing logs in case your, uh, your well database is incomplete. We uh, have uh, at our disposal algorithms in order to enhance the quality of your seismic data, to maybe rework your velocity volumes if you have, for instance, new wells acquired and to uh, also uh, generate uh, the best quality uh, inputs that we will use for the, for the inversion. So in order to achieve that, we have also at our disposal uh, some unique uh, algorithms and technologies such as our residual misalignment correction module. Uh, we will then be able to run uh, the workflow, the inversion workflow corresponding to the data you have, uh, which will all, uh, all pro provide you with a reliable uh, random noise attenuation that is, will allow us increase the, the useful uh, frequency content and part of your, uh, of your seismic data and, uh, and help you, for instance, also for, for structural interpretation. Then, uh, regarding our characterization techniques, so we cover a, a wide scope of techniques, most of them based on, uh, on machine learning technologies, so whether they are supervised on, or unsupervised, and they all aim at uh, providing a lithology classification and uh, associated to that uh, the quantitative reservoir property predictions so mostly in the, in the reservoir lithologies for instance porosity in your reservoir lithology or it can even go uh, up to a TOC if you are working in an unconventional uh, reservoir context. We uh, associate to this kind of uh, techniques the, the corresponding uncertainty analysis so whether through a probabilistic approach or directly through uh, stochastic inversions. That allows us to provide uh, you with uh, different scenarios, whether they are conservative, optimistic, uh, that will allow you to have a better understanding of the uncertainty associated to, uh, to all the results we, we provide. Um, and uh, in order also to have a good understanding of your field, we, uh, in general, also perform seismic and subseismic false detection in order to uh, map and precise the, the location of uh, false, subseismic faults and fractures. And then, uh, in order to help you uh, support your final decisions, we, uh, we ultimately transform all the, the results we have uh, into depths uh, through uh, uh, a detailed um, velocity model building and, uh, and time to depth conversion methods, uh, especially in 3D. So 
whether you want to extract maps uh, or to integrate them directly to your geological models. Uh, we uh, perform that in full integration with, uh, with the other disciplines uh, that uh, will be highlighted a little bit uh, further uh, and later on uh, during the, the workflows uh, illustration. So first part, uh, as mentioned in this uh, overview, is uh, data empowerment we, we propose. Here you see on this slide uh, quite a standard example of seismic data we are used to work with. So as you, as you may uh, notice, it's very, very noisy. And uh, the corresponding image after the model-based inversion we run, which uh, is very efficient in uh, attenuating the random noise. And we will discuss it a little bit later on. But first, um, most of the studies we perform start with uh, going back to the seismic gathers and use them at uh, their best uh, potential in order to generate uh, angle stacks that are adapted to your targets. So uh, with angle range definition uh, adapted to your target levels with velocity models that have to be as accurate as possible in order to have a correct uh, positioning of the events. Um, through this step and through the announcement of the of the velocity models before stacking, we can also provide you with an announcement uh, associated to uh, to the seismic image itself, even on full stack data. Uh, here you have a, you have an, an example of a, of a legacy data uh, that was performed with a, a vintage uh, velocity model, and the updates obtained just after, uh, in fact, uh, announcing the velocity model with, uh, with a new information and uh, performing a, a, a precise uh, NMO correction to remove any move out effects. Uh, well, all this is something that is very easily achieved without necessarily going through a new acquisition or reprocessing area of seismic data. Um, it, can be, it can be very uh, useful and interesting in, uh, in many cases. Uh, another very important step that we uh, usually perform before any uh, inversion study that involves interpretation of review effect. It's what we call the residual misalignment correction, because in general, with the, the angle stacks, the, ang the raw angle stacks we have at, your, uh, at our disposal, we uh, sometimes see, as you can notice on this track in the middle, uh, a mispositioning of the amplitudes uh, over all the different angle stacks, which in the end uh, will leads to uh, an erroneous estimation of the AVO anomalies. So it's very important before any inversion to run this uh, algorithm. You see here, uh, in fact, the effect it provides is that it puts uh, all the different seismic reflections from the different angle stacks where they should be. And then when we are going to interpret the variation of the amplitude with the offset, we are really looking at the same layers, at the same things. And uh, we are going to be able to have a, a quantitative estimation of the AVO, which is very important for all the work we do. Um, here you have uh, an illustration, an example of uh, how we can use all this uh, alignment correction technique in order to, uh, to improve the, the final image of your seismic data. Here you have a legacy uh, full stack from an initial acquisition, initial processing. And uh, you can see, for instance, uh, the seismic horizon that is highlighted here, which is very difficult to interpret at first. And uh, with a proper reprocessing, uh, without, a, without a reprocessing, with a proper uh, processing of the velocity model, so uh, when we regenerate the, the full stack with uh, RNMO correction, we uh, are able to have an image that uh, is a lot more closer to the to, to the reality and a lot more uh, easier to, uh, to handle. So ultimately, through our uh, interwell uh, model-based inversions, we are going to be able to provide you with enhanced version of the seismic, which will allow uh, all of the following work to be performed with more accuracy, whether it is a fault network identification. You can see it on the bottom left picture after inversion, which is a lot more clearer without all the random noise uh, preventing from uh, from uh, identifying the different fault and fractures. And even in this case here, you, you, you may see that uh, working with reflection coefficients or acoustic dependence itself can allow for uh, a better picking uh, of the different horizons uh, 
uh, that uh, will uh, be a lot more precise and, uh, and uh, will allow a lot better uh, understanding of the structure of, uh, of the field and of the reservoir. So for our model-based inversion, so we start with the data conditioning, as uh, I just mentioned. Then we have a very important step, which is the wavelet estimation to use our the statistical and the deterministic hybrid approach that is implemented in uh, interwell that allows us to uh, uh, optimize uh, wavelets for each angle stack that are representative of the seismic data. Then we have advanced, to, advanced tools sorry, for uh, a priori impedance modeling that will allow us to uh, provide uh, accurate uh, a priori models that take into account all the information available, whether it's coming from wells, from interpreted horizons, from uh, seismic velocities. Uh, and we have the possibility to build associated structural model whether based on interpreted horizons or directly guided by a, an automatic uh, extraction of the deep of the seismic events and then based on the, on that we run the, our model based inversion which uh, will allow us to provide the optimized uh, impedance distribution uh, to attenuate the random noise and to also provide the associated synthetic seismic and reflection coefficients uh, as illustrated in the in the previous slide so once we have performed this inversion, we uh, usually want to uh, interpret these impedance values in terms of what's really interesting, what really matters. That means lithology and reservoir properties. So that's where we are going to uh, put uh, in use our seismic characterization workflow. And uh, all workflows will start with feasibility study, where it will be a uh, question of uh, building the petroelastic model or rock physics models uh, in order to make the link between the data we have at our disposal and the uh, objectives you have okay? and assess its feasibility, uh, uh, assess what is uh, reasonable to perform or not and what can be conducted with uh, good confidence. Then uh, the computation step will uh, consist in the design of the um, training samples for instance, and the selection of the most appropriate algorithm to account for the data available and the results of the, of the feasibility study. And then property prediction will be uh, applied on the 3D or 2D uh, seismic inversion results uh, in order to, uh, to have a 3D estimation of, uh, of properties. So, uh, one of the most used uh, techniques that we have at our disposal is our supervised machine learning algorithm. So we have a different uh, algorithm at our disposal here in order to, uh, in general, first identify and discriminate different lithologies or non-continuous variables. And then for each lithology, uh, calibrate lithology dependent relationships or uh, direct the property estimations through multivariate analysis. So here, yeah, what I'm when I'm speaking of reservoir properties, it's in general porosity, but can be also VSH, uh, saturation, pressure, and any in fact continuous variables that has uh, proven uh, during its uh, the, during the feasibility uh, study. So very important part in this workflow, uh, a good conditioning of the input for data, of course, and then the technical expertise to select the appropriate algorithm to design the training data set uh, in order to be able to uh, to match uh, the desired objectives and then to apply it in a, in 3D for uh, for a relevant classification or uh, property prediction also available uh, as uh, among our uh, our techniques are unsupervised uh, algorithms so these machine learning techniques uh, directly work on input data. They can be uh, involved in, uh, in seismic facies identification workflows or, or uh, in, uh, in fracture characterization workflows. Uh, they require a proper uh, QC and conditioning of the input data in order not to, uh, to bias and to have uh, the, the classification misfunction. Then the algorithm provides us with classes and it's uh, on these results that we need to bring a lot of expertise to be able to provide a sound interpretation of uh, the classification because we don't have uh, training samples and the 
output uh, is not directly uh, labeled uh, in terms of uh, lithology and reservoir properties. So uh, whatever the workflow, the technical expertise is always mandatory, just that it uh, takes place at a different part of the, of the execution. Some uh, illustrations of the application of this kind of workflows. Here we have uh, use of lithology prediction using seismic data in an offshore exploration context. Uh, for which the, the workflows we, we have just uh, reviewed together uh, have been applied in order to identify uh, presence of porous sand uh, all over uh, uh, an area. And then it has been uh, used as a constraint, as a driver, uh, in order to uh, perform the yield filling of the stratigraphic model that was, in fact, here based on. A, on seismic inversion cube in order to ensure that uh, we have a consistency between uh, what sees the seismic and uh, what is modeled uh, in, the, in the stratigraphic model. So it, it allowed in this particular case to precise the lateral extension and control the distribution of the sandy oil bearing uh, reservoir. So this was uh, an important uh, achievement because we were in a case here where, with very few wells available. So it comforted a lot the, the analysis that was being performed. Uh, other more standard application is uh, property quantitative property prediction, so quantitative interpretation of the seismic amplitudes. Uh, for instance, in terms of porosity here, uh, we first perform on the left hand side uh, a discrimination between sand and shales with uh, an, taking into account the uncertainty with uh, uncertain samples uh, highlighted in gray here and for the sand samples, we can apply the uh, porosity versus impedance relationship that is viable for this kind of, uh, of lithology and uh, provide uh, the section you have on the right for uh, direct porosity estimation from the, from the seismic data. Uh, other type of workflow that we uh, also want to highlight here is the seismic fracture characterization workflow. We have at our disposal a very large panel of 2D and 3D seismic attributes. So whether they are geometrical, uh, coherence-based, instantaneous, frequency-based, guided or not by the seismic deep, we have a very large uh, inventory of attributes that we uh, investigate. Uh, we then uh, select the more relevant uh, and the more powerful attributes. We uh, balance them through our dedicated tool in order to uh, provide a final uh, blended uh, attribute map uh, which we call the, our fracture index, our seismic fracture index, and that can be used as a, as a good support for uh, lineaments or sub-seismic fault speaking, for instance, and uh, also as a high direct input for, uh, for discrete fracture networks models. So all these kind of techniques take place in the workflows we, uh, we propose in BCID Front Lab. In particular here we have um, we propose uh, integrated exploration studies. So they will uh, uh, involve uh, all together the, all the teams of, uh, of Basic Front Lab, uh, starting from well scale analysis and trying them to, to match with the seismic scale analysis in order to be able to propose uh, uh, concepts that are coherent, consistent, and that uh, more or less uh, take the best out of each uh, each different uh, different um, part of the workflow. So you can notice on this slide also that we have dedicated software for each part uh, of uh, of the workflows. Uh, whether it's easy trace for working at well scale, interwell for the seismic scale analysis, then uh, Cougar, Dionysos, uh, and we can go uh, up to uh, basin modeling and uh, and resource uh, resource assessment. So here you see a lot of uh, different uh, expertise that are present uh, among our, our teams and that uh, are used to uh, work uh, together and closely, closely intertwined uh, in, uh, in these integrated workflows. Other kind of workflow, uh, more dedicated to uh, integrated reservoir modeling. So in this case, uh, petrophysical parts uh, and rock typing parts will have a very, very important uh, role to play because in general we have more wells in this kind of studies. So we integrate that uh, within our stratigraphic models to uh, perform the, the, uh, the accurate uh, modeling 
of the sedimentology, second stratigraphy, and depositional environments. Uh, and in parallel, uh, and uh, in, uh, in integration, we also uh, base our, uh, our analysis on seismic data in order to uh, have a good understanding of the structure, of the structural model. And uh, we uh, reunite all these different uh, approaches within uh, our 3D uh, geological models, which uh, in fact will be uh, the place of integration uh, between uh, uh, rock types, uh, gross depositional environments, seismic constraints in order to uh, have uh, an integrated infilling of uh, the 3D geological model, which will really be uh, the synthesis of all the data available and of the work performed uh, uh, on this data in order to, uh, to have uh, the most uh, precise and accurate uh, image of, uh, of the reservoir. Um, a little bit more hybrid between these two kind of workflows are E2P integrated studies. The particular uh, aspect of this kind of studies is that we have a number of wells which is in general in between the number of wells available in exploration studies which is rather scarce and uh, the number of wells available into uh, mature reservoir, uh, reservoir studies which in general are uh, more numerous. Here we have uh, something intermediate. So we have an integration that is really performed uh, from the beginning between the understanding of the sedimentological context uh, through stratigraphy and depositional model, the petrophysical interpretation and rock typing uh, in order to uh, propose uh, a distribution of fascias of rock types that uh, is coherent with uh, with a sedimentological analysis, and then uh, to be able also to be uh, characterized uh, on the seismic data. And then we uh, go uh, up to uh, the simulation model, which uh, take into account all the reservoir engineering data that is available through uh, our dedicated uh, reservoir department, uh, which uh, will uh, work uh, with uh, our petroleum engineers in order to propose you uh, different scenarios and development forecast in order to be able to uh, to optimize uh, the development of, uh, of your field. Another kind of uh, more specialized studies but uh, that also uh, involves the, the outputs from our seismic characterization uh, work are uh, fractured reservoir characterization for which we uh, combine and integrate uh, the interpretation of geological data, uh, for instance, uh, FMI and core data, uh, in parallel with the false and lineaments uh, picking and identification in the, in the seismic data in order to propose uh, a multidisciplinary interpretation and understanding of the distribution and of the uh, property uh, mapping of uh, the, the different uh, fault subs fault and sub-seismic faults and fractures that can be linked also with uh, the dynamic data when available in order to uh, try to uh, interpret each uh, identify uh, family and scale of fractures in terms of uh, dynamic properties. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicolas. Uh, Vincent, to you. Uh, and for the people who did not uh, yet answer the polls, don't hesitate. Thank you, thank you, Nicolas. Hi, everyone. I, I'm now going to illustrate two different case studies. So the first one um, is dedicated to oh, please, if you, yes, to lithology and property prediction with machine learning on a North Africa project. This time with one objective, which was to provide um, information from seismic data to constrain static and dynamic reservoir models with 29 uh, wells available uh, for this project and only 15 wells useful for inversion. And we worked on, on this project with um, only a seismic gather file. So it's a point to illustrate that if you don't have the mandatory angle stack required to, to perform a determinist elastic inversion, it's neither a problem for us nor for Interwell, because as illustrated on the next slide, uh, Interwell have all uh, the complete angle stack generation modules available, where you can perform a lot of QC, for instance, on the 
on the, the gather file, you can see here uh, on this QC on the left part of this slide, uh, an illustration finally, um, and we saw that we, we see clearly that the limited angle, the limit offset here is uh, above 30 degrees in the, in the target uh, level. So we can perform all this kind of QC on gather file on velocity volume also. And finally, to select your your different angle range and to see directly the impact of your angle range selection uh, on the on the window on the right. So just just directly. Finally, after uh, obtaining uh, and computing reliable angle stacks, we can then perform uh, a deterministic elastic inversion. So this inversion is illustrated on the next slide where you can see on the left uh, the optimized impedance, uh, pay optimized impedance model obtained after seismic inversion. We obtain also one S optimized impedance model. And in the center of the slide, you have first the initial seismic data. And I can just switch with the, to illustrate the synthetic data here, where you, where you can clearly see the reliable random noise attenuation from the initial seismic data set. Uh, to this synthetic seismic data and the notable announcement of the seismic quality. So the comparison doesn't require any any comments, but it's uh, it's uh, it's a really reliable really random noise attenuation. And finally, before to perform a seismic characterization, we are first to verify the predictivity of our inversions at, on different blind wells, and these blind wells are illustrated on the right parts of the slide where you can uh, finally see a comparison in between uh, impedances in red, which are the initial impedance computed on at these wells. And finally in blue, the impedance uh, computed and provided by the seismic inversion and by our model-based inversion. So you can clearly see the, the consistency between these uh, impedances values, which illustrate the reliability of our inversion and the predictivity at wells. And now after that, and after this QC, and by using this optimized uh, P and S impedances model, we can then perform the, the seismic characterization on the, on the next slide by, by using our machine, uh, our interwell machine learning tools. And here, for instance, the multivariate analysis uh, options and tools algorithm, which allow um, us by optimizing by a, an hyper surface here, allowing the estimation of a continuous variable using one or more uh, known variables. And these algorithms allow us finally to predict, for instance, here a, a, Vickley, a Vickley volume over the whole field. This Vickley volume is, um, is really coherent with the seismic data and consistent with, uh, sorry, with the data recorded at Wells. And finally, uh, within this, um, these same bodies, uh, highlighting in yellow here with the lower Vickley values, we can then predict porosity uh, to within this uh, within these sun bodies uh, with a Vickley uh, lower than 0 0.2. So it's a good illustration of uh, a results of a seismic characterization here. And to summarize this um, to summarize these case studies, first only with well data and seismic gather file, um, reliable angle stack have been generated. Then we performed um, a seismic, the elastic seismic inversion to obtain uh, one P and S impedance model, then to use it to, to predict uh, here the Vickley or the, the porosity um, in, uh, in, the, in the sand bodies. And these two volumes can directly be used as a constraint for the geological model infilling. So now I'm going to, to illustrate a second case study, this time uh, on, geo on stochastic inversion for seismic characterization. We worked on this project on a, on a producing field with a considerable number of wells, 60 wells useful for stochastic inversion and characterization here. We worked on a complex stratigraphic context, this time with a non-uniform erosion surface over the, the wool field, and the presence also of eruptive valleys to be to be identified. We have three main we had three main objectives during this project. The first one was to finally to take maximum advantage of the new seismic data. The second one was to identify at height resolution the position of the reservoir units and their quality. You can see here on the, the small section the identification in yellow of the reservoir unit and the classification of two sand classes within this reservoir unit. And finally, 
the last objective was to predict the presence of eruptive valleys for risk reducing during the drilling. And this time again, you can see on the section here, the illustra one illustration of the location of the distribution of this uh, volcanic valley in, in red. And finally, on the map below, the, the distribution of this volcanic uh, lithology identified on the, on the wool field, um, consistent with the well data in, in black, uh, which uh, reach these um, this volcanic uh, valleys during the drilling. So now on the on the next slide, just a, a short description of our global stochastic inversion uh, algorithm, how this global stochastic inversion works. So first, at each iteration, a set of acoustic impedance model is generating using our direct sequential uh, simulation algorithm, so the DSS algorithm. And from each model of acoustic impedance, synthetic seismic is calculated and then compared in terms of correlation coefficient to the real seismic. And acoustic impedance maximizing the, the cost function are stored and used along with the correlation coefficient as secondary variable for the generation of new set of models during the, the next iteration. And one important point is that areas of height uncertainty usually associated with low signal noise ratio or area also with a a lower energy content uh, remain poorly matched for the entire iterative procedure. Then on the on the next slide, just a comparison with uh, this global stochastic inversion uh, acoustic and this global elastic inversion. It's mainly the same um, the same steps with only one main one one more steps at the beginning. First, we we start this time again by the simulation of pay impedance model. And then by knowing this pay impedance model, then we co-simulate S impedance model by using our code ASS joint probabilities. So by knowing this pay impedance model, we co-simulate S impedance model. And then by using FATI the approximation and, and convolution, and uh, which allow us to generate synthetic partial angle stacks, we compare these angle stacks with the real seismic to obtain this time uh, one best EP model and also one best um, IS model, which uh, can be used in the next iteration as secondary variables. So now just two questions and two comparison between stochastic inversion first and uh, the deterministic inversion. In the stochastic inversion, well data is considered as hard data. Impedance distributions are retrieved from well and possibility using rock physics model. That means that the distribution, the initial impedance distribution uh, observed at well are always honored in the inversion results. This time, compared to a, a geo model now, simulations are controlled by an optimization process constrained by seismic data and optionally by deterministic deterministic inversion and we are going to to discuss on that point uh, in uh, in few in few slides and finally uh, resulting simulation can be behind the seismic resolution and one key point is that the solution is non-unique and this non-unicity of the, the solution allow us to assess uncertainties on the elastic model prediction and one more time we are going to illustrate more precisely uh, this point in the in the following slides so now uh, our stochastic inversion process is a, is a real inversion process. During and after the process, stochastic inversion can be controlled through its correlation function. You have here on the top of this slide a comparison between the initial observed seismic and the final uh, GSI best fit synthetic. So you can clearly see the really good um, consistency between these two seismic volumes. And in the lower part of this slide, the evolution of the correlation function from the first iteration where you can see low correlation for the for the first iteration and the progressive increase of this uh, correlation function from the first iteration to the last one where we finally reach um, a plateau uh, correlation plateau here with the highest value of uh, correlation around 0 0.88 so it's really a true inversion uh, inversion process 
So now we are going to talk about the, the results, oh, sorry for the, for the noise. We are going to talk about stochastic inversion results and comparing these results with uh, stochastic inversion, between stochastic inversion and deterministic inversion. On the top part of this slide, you have deterministic acoustic impedance and on the lower part, standard GSI acoustic impedance, so the Beth model. And you can clearly see here that stochastic inversion results present a higher resolution than deterministic inversion uh, by combining finally the high vertical variability here observed at, at wells and the lateral extension um, and the lateral extension provided by, by seismic data finally. In interwell, you have also the possibility to use deterministic acoustic impedance as a constraint for the, the GSI inversion. So I'm going to switch now between this uh, standard GSI acoustic impedance model uh, on, on, that, on that new section, which illustrates the GSI inversion with deterministic constraint. And what, what we can clearly see is that this new uh, GSI results by using deterministic constraint presents a higher lateral continuity which is also more coherent with the, observa the geological observation um, made on the, on the field. And finally, um, we first discussed, previously discussed on the non-unicity of the solution, which lead to a realistic quantification of un uncertainties. Indeed, by assessing the difference in the, in the impedance models between the different simulations, these comparisons allow us to assess the uncertainties on the, on the impedance models and allow us finally, as explained on this, uh, on this slide, to assess the uncertainty on um, several properties, for instance here, porosity. In a unique lithology, the porosity can be estimated linearly with spay impedance, as illustrated on this cross plot, for instance, where you can see the relationship between here porosity and, uh, and pay impedance. The interquartile range directly output from interwell stochastic inversion provides the pay impedance variation among all the simulations and at each cell of the inverted cube. So among the same inversion run, the interquartile range captures the uncertainties associated to the random noise and the mismatch with seismic data and variography. So that's why these attributes can directly be used finally to translate the uncertainty um, on pay impedance into an uncertainty for, for instance, here on, uh, on porosity prediction. And this uncertainty on porosity prediction is illustrated here on the, on the seismic section, where you can see the porosity variation uh, between the different simulation from zero to, to 5%. And finally, to conclude this uh, presentation of these case studies, I just want to illustrate and, and compare one lithology prediction by using deterministic inversion. So at deterministic inversion scale on the left part of this slide, where you can see a, a small number of uh, learning samples and the large scale, the large vertical scale, uh, which correspond to the deterministic inversion scale. And finally, on the right part of this slide, the, the same results, but this time by using GSI inversion. First of all, you see that we have a, a higher number of uh, learning samples, which allow us to have a better constraint and a better definition of our different class, lithology classes, and to reduce the uncertainty on the lithology prediction. We have observed also um, an increasing of the, of the higher resolution of these GSI inversion results with a, a thinner definition of the um, different lithology bodies. And finally, by, um, by performing an uncertainty analysis on the P and S impedance prediction and on the discriminants analysis over all the simulations, uh, this uncertainty analysis allow us finally to, to detect and to identify the lithology bodies with the lower per, uh, with the lower uncertainty here over all the different uh, simulations and these volumes is useful for instance for volume computation or connectivity analysis for instance so to conclude this um, this presentation i just want to to show you a really short illustration and demonstration um, on interwell our our software so uh, on the next slide, you can first just see the, the description of the main window uh, 
in Interwell, where you can clearly see on the top part the different main menus according to our main uh, workflows from seismic inversion, data operation, uh, matrix and fracture characterization, and finally all the dedicated uh, and more specific inversion workflow, geostatistic, multi azimutal 4D or multi-component also. On the left part of the slide, you have your, your project tree and your data tree, where you can easily find all your data from your input data first, and finally find also all your generated data all along the project or, or all along your studies. So now I'm going to, to start the, this short video and I choose to illustrate here uh, first uh, uh, one RMS map computed in the reservoir, uh, in the reservoir uh, level where you can finally see here the impact of the cliff on the, seismic, uh, on the seismic energy and on the seismic signal here on these maps. You can see the Google map view uh, behind. And I also choose to, to illustrate here is a line which illustrates the topography of the, of the top reservoir horizon. So you, you are going to see that uh, this is the line just in a few seconds. Oh, yes, it's good. And you can also choose to select or unselect um, different attributes to display different attributes with or without transparency by using different color scale or um, even create your own color scale. On the right part of this window, you have a comparison between here initial seismic data and the synthetic data. You can clearly see the improvement of the, the, synthetic, uh, the synthetic data and the announcement of the seismic data quality. I can also display some pay impedance model here, optimized impedance model, often used to refine the interpretation of the horizons, but also used to generate and to compute some uh, property prediction, for instance, at the Viclay prediction here, and also to predict after this uh, Viclay prediction, finally to, to predict porosity uh, within the sound body uh, identify here in the in these sections. So all these functionalities are just display here. May all the functionalities are available on on Interwell by using these different uh, these different modules. And the next line illustrate finally the um, yes the next one illustrate uh, all the main functionalities available in in Interwell from QC and seismic data conditioning through seismic inversion with a large uh, and variable uh, inversion available in Interwell. And finally, until reservoir characterization and lithology attributes and also fracture network characterization. So as presented in this presentation, Interwell is a really modern and evolutive software um, as presented by Nicola, used every day by, by specialists in multidisciplinary projects. And uh, it's a good, real, it's a real strength of this um, of this software. So thank you for your for your attention and and mainly thank you for your for your trust also. Uh, thank you, Vincent, very much, and Nicolas for, uh, for the great webinar. Uh, you also have another poll which I will set now. Um, so I'm publishing a poll if you want to answer it. Uh, and then we have some questions regarding uh, the your part of the presentation, uh, Vincent. Uh, we have present, uh, a question by uh, Mr. Uh, Hussein Abdullah regarding unconventional reservoirs. How do you manage heterogeneity mapping in your workflow? Yes, so for, when we worked on this uh, unconventional reservoir, we worked uh, also with different, uh, we compute some different attributes and we are going to, to compute, uh, for instance, uh, to estimate the frackability of, of rocks, but also to predict TOC values. So this is a one really important point on that kind of workflow. We, we work first with the TOC prediction, as you can see here on this presentation with the VCLA, but this time we work with uh, TOC. And in the second time, we can also use um, density, pre dens the prediction of the density over the wool field to, to determine and to, to determine some frackability attributes. And then by combining these two attributes, TOC, TOC sorry, and frackability, we are able to identify the area which present both high TOC and high frackability values to, to, to identify the, 
the best area fin finally and the area with the higher interest in terms of uh, unconventional reservoir. So we have two other questions also by uh, Kanyang. How, uh, how does the impedance model, how was the impedance model built using well data and horizons? Um, if the well log data has been upscaled to match with the inversion impedance, this is the first question. Uh, so, for, uh, in, indeed, uh, our interval inversion is uh, for acoustic inversion, for acoustic and elastic deterministic inversion, are model based inversion. Uh, that means that at, in the first point, we first generated, we first generate um, a low uh, frequency um, a priori model, and this a priori model was generated by using the, the impedance uh, computed at wells first. Uh, after um, rescaling uh, at the seismic resolution. And then these values at wealth are then um, extend over the wool field uh, with two different ways. The first way is by using the, the horizons and the, the seismic horizons to, to, pro to, to extend and to, to propagate these values at wealth over the wool field. And we have also another option on interwell, which was to use uh, directly the seismic dip to propagate the information recorded at and computed at well, the impedance, over the wool field. So that's um, the two main ways uh, used uh, on interwell to propagate information at well and to generate uh, a priori model. Okay, for the first machine learning example, uh, if it can be used for frontier areas, which uh, just had a few wells available, uh, augment with data. Yeah. yeah I, can, I can answer this one. Uh, in fact, we, we also uh, apply this kind of workflows, or this kind of techniques in, uh, in context and uh, in fields where we have, uh, let's say, one well available, a few wells. Uh, even sometimes no well really on, on the field itself, but only uh, nearby wells, regional wells. And uh, what, what is possible at this stage is either to train your uh, your um, your uh, your data and your your um, your algorithm through training samples that are uh, built from analogs uh, in the nearby fields, nearby wells. That's one possibility. Another possibility is to uh, directly train these classification algorithms with uh, the results of petroelastic models and rock physics models um, where, where we in fact model what we, what we expect and what we could reasonably find and uh, reasonably uh, um, want to track and to identify in, uh, in, uh, in the selected reservoir layer and then uh, apply it on the uh, on, uh, on the inversion results. So yes, in this case, we we could kind of uh, augment well data by, uh, in fact, uh, adding uh, modeled uh, samples. Uh, we can also perform uh, some techniques associated, such as fluid substitution, to uh, test or uh, simulate what would be the, the response of the, of the well logs uh, if we uh, replace uh, any fluid by, uh, by any other. And, uh, assess its impact on the on the impedance values and uh, on the classification itself. Just a, a final comment, Nicola, by uh, Mr. Amin uh, Belahsen. He said, uh, "Don't conventional mean tight reservoir also." So uh, I know yes, that you did. Uh, yeah. So I also added a, a final poll, please, uh, just to uh, get your feedback on the expectation on the on the presentation. Uh, if anyone has any left question. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us or uh, or even if you, you have anything for the couple of two minutes left. Uh, this presentation, as I said, is um, uh, recorded and will be uh, on YouTube. We will be informing you when uh, when it's out. Thank you very much again, uh, Nicola and Vincent, for, uh, for this great webinar. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, having more webinars of this sort soon. Um, and of course, your feedback on which topic would you like uh, to have as a dedicated presentation, uh, we will get back to this and, uh, and adapt all the future webinars uh, with regards to your feedback. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, please don't hesitate to answer for the, the last poll we have, if the presentation was relevant to your expectations. So I stay a bit online. Uh, Nicola and Vincent, thank you very much. And thank, thank, thank you, Nicola. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.